Hello friends and welcome to my YouTube channel Simply Stocks and today I am going to talk about Century Ply Boards and we will do a valuation analysis of the stock and the company. So let's get started. First of all a disclaimer that this is not a stock recommendation and people taking any position to any share that I talk about should do that with their own due diligence and research and I am not in favor or against any company that I talk about. Before I talk about a Century Plyboard, a small request that kindly support me on Patreon. Once you do that, help me world channel, help you also ask me questions and seek out answers in greater detail. Once you get a $10 membership, you will have access to my portfolio, my watch list and number of podcasts I put up from time to time. And also if you can pay $100 upfront, you get one year access by paying for 10 months. For detailed market or company talk or number of stocks you are holding, you can directly email me and we can work things out with a fee. And also if you cannot pay on Patreon, you can get the WhatsApp membership as well. So you can email me for that as well. Now about the company established in 1982, it is the largest supplier of plywood in India and have 25% market share in the space. It is the biggest brand in this space and have presence across India and also exports to a number of countries. The market cap of the company is around 15,000 crores at the moment and has done exceedingly well over the last 3-4 years in terms of stock. If you look at the financials, uh, then sales went up by around 94% and remember Q1 of uh, FI22 was the June quarter of uh, 2021, so it was marred by uh, the pandemic and that's why the numbers look swell, but even on that part that uh, the base was small, uh, the numbers look extremely good, 94% jump in sales. A 200% or 3x jump in profitability to around 93 crores. Even if you look at 2019 numbers, they look extremely good uh, in terms of FI22, FI23 numbers. And uh, we have FI23 Q1. So virtually no debt. A low promoter but high institutional holding at around 40%. ROE of 22% is the best in this business against margin. Again, margin of 16% in a very competitive environment is, is uh, the best in the business at the moment. So results at a glance, margins were up uh, 300 basis points year on year. So from around 13% it went up to 16% but dipped 200 basis points uh, sequentially that is quarter on quarter. It did dip but one of the best among peers in terms of margins. Uh, sales growth of over 50% from FI19 is commendable. So that's what I was speaking. So if we go back to these numbers, uh, 890 crores of sales, they had around uh, sales of around 550 or around uh, 550, 570 crores of sales in 2019 in FI20 or you can say 2019 June. So that's FI21 first quarter. So the growth has been over 50% even from that non-pandemic quarter and that is where uh, uh, that is where the crux lies that the company is doing extremely well. Uh, profit growth remained robust as we have seen and consistently they have been growing profits and demand is to come in the in this festive se season after a three year hiatus. So you have to agree with me here that uh, after 2019 December things have dipped sharply for most of the consumer centric companies and when you look at plywood or any any company that is related to real estate or real estate ancillary companies the demand has dipped sharply uh, over the last three years so I think this time around from October to December demand will pick up uh, tremendously and numbers are set to even improve from these levels these these numbers are extremely encouraging but the best of the numbers should come in in the December and the March quarter uh, the cash position has also strengthened the cash on books has strengthened so we could look at inorganic growth uh, for the company as well but at the moment company is keeping the cash and and giving decent dividends as well In terms of the revenue picture, uh, apart from keeping the cash, uh, I want to add one more point is they are also expanding uh, their capacities. So they are also believing that the uh, order book will swell and there will be more orders coming in. In terms of the revenue for the last three years, we've seen 
a consistent uh, increase in it in fy19 they had a revenue of nearly 2300 crores it was flat in fy20 at 2320 crores or so uh, and dipped in fy21 because of the pandemic the pandemic year as you call it so it dipped but not very sharply but it did go down uh, in fy22 we saw a huge jump and basically this jump came in from q2 onwards from september onward the numbers started to look good and december and march was big so 3000 crores of sales and on that uh, uh, the company is trading at 15000 crores so market cap so it's trading at five times sales at the moment with the kind of numbers and and the kind of you can say market uh, share that it commands it could easily trade seven to eight times sales in terms of profitability this is very interesting 150 crores of profits in fi19 it dipped in fi20 and in fi21 although there was the pandemic part because of the margin expansion the profitability came out to be pretty good at 191 crores in an fi22 it just exploded by more than 65 percent to around 313 crores and that's where the stock also exploded uh, from uh, 2021 Feb March onwards and over the last 18 months has gone up tremendously from those 250 to 80 levels or so and the margins are the uh, are the best way to look at uh, uh, these numbers in in a complete sense so what we have seen is that 13 percent margin in fi19 which dipped to 12 percent in fi20 which was uh, mind you is a non-pandemic year yes the last quarter was a little bit uh, you can say affected by it uh, due to the shutdown in late march but otherwise uh, the quarter was uh, pretty fine and, and yet the company did not do that well on the margin front fi21 the margins got shot up to 16 percent even though there's a lot of problems uh, with uh, supply chain with with a lot of effect of the uh, shutdown that we saw across india so uh, what happened here was that the company had back-ended operations and so backward integration of their uh, production uh, took place and uh, they used to use fuel but from fi 2021 20, onwards uh, what they use it they they used biogas and renewable energy at most uh, in order to propel their uh, uh, propel their production and at the same time they had in-house you can say power plants built over the last uh, two three years so that uh, whatever consumption of fuel and power etc that they were doing earlier uh, from external sources and paying uh, to the governments etc uh, they were doing it in-house because of their uh, cash positions they were able to do that and so what happened is the mar the expenses uh, uh, went down sharply the expenses went down tremendously and eventually uh, the margin expansion took place by 400 basis points from 12 percent to 16 percent and has continued in fi22 uh, with a 200 basis point jump in expansion in 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 margins uh, to around 18 percent with operational efficiency that they have brought in with uh, new age technology etc so I think the margins are set to improve not only uh, do they they'll keep the margin at 18 19 percent I think they'll improve it they'll bring it to 20 21 percent in the next couple of years and that's where the moat lies that in FY24 the numbers are going to set to be even better and much better from here and uh, the stock should trade at higher valuations uh, so basically it was not because of simply because of the fact that uh, the pandemic weaned away so so the margins expanded it was pro it was primarily because of their in-house built of uh, uh, most of their expenses that they were incurring uh, that they are not not incurring at the moment and they have spent on that and this is a long-standing you can say profitability growth that they'll sh they'll see because of the uh, expenses contraction uh, on on the balance sheet so eventually the margins will keep on expanding as uh, growth comes so basically as uh, demand kicks in in the festive season and probably all throughout 2023 i think the margins are only set to improve even further because of uh, their operational efficiency 
coming to the segment wise breakup of the sales uh, that they are doing so uh, kindly uh, do concentrate on this part because uh, how their sales have uh, sales do come in it's extremely important to understand this in order to understand how the business would work going forward so 53 percent of their sales comes from plywood business and remember that whatever i'm saying here is that it's extremely crucial to understand that 25 percent of the market share is with century plywood and there's 70 percent of uh, uh, the plywood business that is unorganized so so in that sense it is the largest and probably the only player there are two three players in here in the plywood space but uh, century plywood uh, rule the roost and this 70 percent business uh, is uh, uh, is unorganized and there's a huge un unorganized sector uh, where the competition lies for this uh, company because uh, the pricing uh, is extremely different uh, compared to you can say branded items you would have seen that uh, when you go ahead and buy into plywood uh, from uh, your uh, you can say neighborhood compared to a uh, brands like century plywood so they have 25 percent market share here 53 percent of their total sales comes from plywood uh, 21 percent of their sales comes from laminates and laminates have become uh, the toast of the town over the last uh, two three years because of their uh, nature because of their looks etc and they are now uh, modifying into other kinds of laminate so that they are able to uh, you can say lure more customers into this business uh, MDF is also uh, there and that is that they have around 15% market share in MDF and there another company in which I'll make a video later on which is green panel if green ply uh, they are big in MDF and and so uh, century plywood is second here but they still have 15% uh, of their revenue coming from MDFs and the margins here are much better and particle board uh, business is around 4% which is extremely uh, niche at the moment and probably they have increased that from 1, one to 2% but I don't think they'll uh, look at that uh, to increase in the next 4-5 years. I think they'll more or less concentrate on the MDF as well as the plywood business which have been doing well in terms of margins and profitability uh, for the company. So if we look at a segment wise performance of the company in terms of sales and profit margins uh, year on year I mean for this June quarter year on year from last quarter uh, there would be a sharp increase uh, but the way the increase has been uh, it is not just because of the lower base so plywood had an increase of 110 percent laminates had an increase of 86 percent uh, MDF sold more uh, this year at the tune of 71 percent particle board business did really well and uh, grew by around 113 percent so overall growth has been uh, pretty evident in here and basically if their mdf business does even better in which they are trying to put in more uh, capacity as well as put in more money uh, in terms of uh, you can say uh, advertising etc i think the uh, profitability will be even uh, bigger because if you look at uh, the margins then in mdf we have had uh, 34 percent uh, uh, profit margins this time around versus 23 percent a growth of 1100 basis points and particle board we it expanded by 1500 basis points laminate there was a dip a little bit of dip of 100 basis points in laminate but uh, plywood had a had an expansion of 500 basis points in terms of margins and that's where uh, the most of the money really came in on the bottom line because plywood is there 53 percent of their business or uh, more than half of their business so uh in in all of this uh what we have seen is that uh whatever their uh, majority business is where the sales come in say 53 percent uh, from plywood and 15% uh, from MDF uh, they have done extremely well in there in terms of uh, you can say margin expansion 500 and 1100 basis points respectively and that's where uh, most of their uh, you can say profitability has come in and and this will continue in fact uh, go up further as we go along in the festive season and towards 2023 and that is where I'm hoping that the numbers would expand going forward 
so just a valuation check on uh, where the stock lies at the moment it's not very uh, you can say attractive it's not cheap but it's not expensive either so just to give you a picture uh, current eps for fy22 has been uh, 14 rupees and uh, expected by fy23 eps would be closer to 18 and a half rupees i expect a uh, a good 30% jump in EPS and profitability in in FI23 so 18 and a half rupees and on that basis it is trading at 36 times earnings which is not cheap because there is another company as I mentioned Greenfly which is trading at around 19 20 times uh, earnings half of this but remember that margins here are much better double of that of Greenfly in in all segments and they are into uh, more segments than what Greenfly is so not not quite directly comparable but still it is trading at a higher valuations but if we look at FY24 I think there will be more traction in here 2023 should be big for all these companies which suffered during the pandemic so I expect in FY24 EPS to be closer to 25 rupees I expect 30-35% growth in profitability on that basis uh, we could see the stock trade at a PE of 40 which is trading at currently I, I don't see a PE expansion uh, of uh, the stock from this 3940 levels uh, so at, at a PE of 40 the stock should trade at 1000 rupees by mid of 2024 I, I think in the next couple of years it should be around 1000 rupees and if you have a 3 year time frame then 1250-1300 is very much possible which is a double from here so this is a stock that could double over the next uh, uh, three years or so uh, and could go to thousand rupees over the next two years or so so in my opinion what needs to be done here is that you can buy from a three year perspective if you have the stock hold on to it till 2024 april or so and i think we could see the stock in four digits uh, short term as well the charts look good i think after the consolidation it, it is looking extremely good if you get a chance to buy it at 630 640 i think the support lies between 620 630 or so and so the stock may just surge from uh, say end of september early october as the festive season comes in so technically also it has consolidated for weeks and is now looking like breaking out so even for a short term trade it looks good for a 20% upside uh, but I think the best of the money will be made if you buy the stock and hold it from a 3 year perspective this could uh, at least double from here go up 80 to 90% from here so this is my video on century plywood please like and subscribe my channel hit the bell icon so you can get my video straight away when I post it kindly support me on patreon thanks a lot for watching